police in Indonesia using sticks to beat Hazara refugees from Afghanistan. A minority long oppressed back in Afghanistan, the Hazara have been coming to Indonesia for years, hoping to get asylum in other countries like the US and Australia. Their protests escalated after a Hazara man named Syed Balki committed suicide on January 16th. He had been awaiting resettlement for six years, unable to work or send his five children to school. We spoke to his fellow Hazara refugees on a group call. We went to the UNHCR office. We lost one of our Hazara refugees. He suicided. Yeah? We went there to ask for help, but the police beat us very bad. Ten boys were injured and they were in hospital. They beat the women, the children were tortured. Uh, I got injured also. I have uh, uh, back pain and also my knee has pain also. One of uh, our friends got injured in his uh, head. Indonesia is not a signatory of the 1951 Refugee Convention, meaning that refugees can stay there while they wait to go to another country, but they're not allowed to work or go to school. All they can do is wait. Refugees are here almost for almost a decade, yeah? Ten years, I think, is not uh, an easy or uh, easy to live without family, to live without any job, to live without any basic rights. Things got even tougher for the Hazaras in Indonesia when the Taliban took over Afghanistan in August. The situation of refugees become even worse because most of their families are living uh, in danger in Afghanistan. Hazara people are the minorities and has always been targeted by Taliban. The Hazara are also a minority in Indonesia. They are Shia Muslims in a country that is 99% Sunni. It's more than eight years I didn't do my, uh, I didn't follow my religion because I'm afraid here. If I do it, they will come and kill me. There is no hope, there is no future. So everything in here is unclear. We are losing our energy and day by day we are getting weaker. Day, day by day we are getting more hopeless. <laughs> 